I work on WebKit and more specifically the HTML media playback support with this streamer. So to give it to outline of the talk, I will first give a quick introduction of WebKit, uh, really quick, an overview of the architecture, and more specifically how we do media playback, HTML media playback in WebKit with uh, this streamer. And um, I will try to open the door to more um, WebKit gestionary integration in more platforms uh, because currently it's supported only in one platform in WebKit. So yeah, the end goal would be to basically uh, to spread the use of this streamer in more uh, WebKit based applications in more platforms than Linux. So about WebKit, uh, it's a content rendering engine. Um, it's not a browser, uh, but you can make one browser with it. Uh, but you can also make a, a lot of application with, with WebKit to render HTML. Or, uh, it can be desktop applications or embedded applications as well. Uh, it's highly standards compatible. Um, it supports uh, the latest standards, the web standards around, like CSS3, SVG, HTML5, and so on. And in fact, uh, a lot of some developers of the WebKit projects are uh, part of the W3C. Uh, so they, they can write uh, and participate in the specifications right on the program. Um, about the WebKit ecosystem, the, uh, <coughs> WebKit was initially started in 2005 by Apple as a fork of HTML. And then a uh, lot of companies joined the project uh, by contributing their own part of WebKit. And, uh, and now the reality is that uh, there are a lot of devices around in the market that use WebKit. Um, and there are also a lot of applications uh, on your desktop. For instance, in GNOME, uh, there is a Devel, which uses WebKit now. Uh, the App Navigator, Yelp as well, Epiphany, the browser. And, uh, really uh, more and more applications are based on WebKit. Um, the high level of WebKit is basically consist consisting of three parts. Um, first there is the JavaScript core, the JavaScript, core uh, JavaScript engine and um, it also contains some platform specific uh, things like a string class and things like that. Then there is WebCore, which is the biggest part. Um, it contains a lot of blocks uh, for uh, parsing, uh, network communication, layouting, and uh, media playback, for instance. And then on the higher, le higher level, there is uh, WebKit, which is basically a, a set of platform-specific APIs uh, that are used by application developers. So if you are a developer, you basically will use uh, these APIs. And um, this set of APIs is splitted by platform specific uh, ports. Uh, I, I listed here some ports we have. Uh, the GTK Plus port, which basically is, uh, provides a GTK widget called the WebView, which allows to integrate uh, your application with uh, a web core or JavaScript core. And then there are a lot of popular ports like. Uh, the Qt port, uh, mainly developed by Nokia, uh, EFL, which uh, Samsung is uh, developing as well, uh, the Chromium, developed by uh, Google, and uh, various other ports developed by Apple. So more specifically about the HTML5 media playback in WebKit, um, just to give a little how you get to uh, the media play itself. Uh, you use the um, the HTML and DOM API uh, of the HTML media element. Uh, so you can use that in JavaScript or basically if you write HTML. And, uh, and then at uh, second level, there is a web core uh, graphics which contains a media player object. And this object uh, will basically defer uh, the, the playback to uh, platform uh, dependent implementations. So uh, this is some, some implementations we have, uh, the gestionary implementation of course, um, 
the cube ports use uh, Qt and Phonon, and uh, the Mac ports use QuickTime, for instance. But there are a lot of more implementations, but uh, I didn't want to see them all. So about the Gestural Media Player, um, to give a little overview of the features we have, we use Playbin 2, of course, uh, and uh, we have some custom sync and uh, source elements. Um, I will give some more details about that uh, later. And we have some basic support for trade modes, like uh, updating the, play, the playback uh, rate speed, uh, be it positive or negative, and things like that. On this buffering for um, formats that support it, uh, like ADI, OG, uh, WebM. And uh, we also have some full screen video display support. Uh, uh, we'll give some more details about that uh, later as well. So, we thought about um, basically use uh, GStreamer in other ports of WebKit. Uh, right now it's used only in the EF EFL port and the GTK Plus port, but what about using it on, on the Mac port, for instance, or in the WinCairo port on Windows? Uh, the fact that it's really possible because uh, the media player uh, supports multiple private instances. So at one time you can have uh, multiple private players and the choice is made uh, basically by the media player based on the, on the main type of the media to play and the, and the codex. Here you, you don't see it, I can try to... So here you see that I gave a little example of a video element uh, advertising uh, wanting to play uh, an open video uh, uh, file. And at one time, the player will basically get the time attribute and uh, ask all the private player uh, if they support uh, this combination of my time plan and codex. So, um, we talked about the Mac port and OneCare ports to basically use uh, the system on these platforms uh, as a, a kind of a case study. <coughs> so a quick list of what to do if you really want to port uh, the Gstreamer player in your WebKit port. You first need to have some platform packages, of course, of Gstreamer. Um, you need to integrate with JLib, some really minimal integration. Uh, I will give some more details about that. And uh, you need to maybe customize a bit the, the source and video sync uh, element we have in WebKit. And then there is a specific topic about full screen uh, video, and finally, uh, you just need to build your, your WebKit port. So, on Windows, we just used OSS Build because it's a perfect fit for for the task. Uh, we have some, it provides some binaries and installer, it's really, really practical for the task. So basically that's what we use for the WinCare robot. Uh, on Mac it's a bit more complicated uh, well, for now. Uh, I would like to be able to use OSS Build as well. Uh, there, there has been some development recently on, on that field, uh, but it's not there yet. So when I wrote, uh, when I did the porting on Mac, I just built everything myself and, uh, uh, with um, GH build and with some tricks like uh, at link, uh, you need to uh, add the new options like uh, add up at Mac instant names. And then uh, when you build uh, the gestumer, the framework, you need to relocate, uh, change the path inside this inside each uh, dynamic library. So it's a bit, uh, it's like a plumbering, but uh, it, it works. So the next step when you have some <coughs> streamer packages on your platform is to basically start coding in WebKit. Um, some really simple uh, GD main context integration is needed because, um, I will give some more details about that. Uh, because basically in the player we have a GST bus signal watch and uh, we need uh, context, main context iterations so that uh, the watch is, 
does its, its work basically. It uh, finds sense in us and, and so on. So uh, what we did on Mac is uh, use a, a build an observer on the on the run loop, on the main run loop of a web call, and uh, call uh, Gmail in this iteration fairly this way. On Windows it's really similar, and there are other ways to do it, but I chose to integrate with the message loop of uh, of Windows, of the well, of the window created by the Windows report. Um, then there are some modifications to do in the source element. Well, first, um, I should mention it's based on AppSAC and it's, it was written by uh, Sebastian Dolce, maybe he's in the room. You know. uh, well, thanks to him for writing that, it's really uh, a nice element. Uh, so, the element use uh, the web core resource loader is really nice because this way you can reuse the HTTP session data when you request the video and when you download it. Uh, that's really nice because some websites like uh, YouTube or Vimeo require some specific data in the HTTP session to really deliver the, the video content. So this element integrates uh, nicely with all the WebKit machinery to load resources. And it's quite, uh, quite nice. But uh, it contains some platform specific bits because uh, basically in AppSSC we have two signals. Uh, one uh, <coughs> when we need to get more data and one when uh, we, uh, we have enough data. Basically when the internal queue of AppSSC is full up or not. So to cope with that we need to basically pause or, or resume the HTTP transfer. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I added some if devs, but uh, I have a patch already to, to use uh, more web more, more work, work core resource uh, APIs for that instead of the if devs. So, for, for video painting, uh, basically, our video scene doesn't do any painting itself. Uh, it just gives the GST buffers uh, to the player, the private player instance, uh, using a, a signal. So what, what we did is basically uh, create a new image stream object, which will uh, defer to its implementations the actual painting. So we have uh, two implementations, currently one for Cairo, which is used by the GTK Plus port, and uh, the Win Cairo port. Um, basically, it takes a GST buffer as input and creates a Cairo surface. And then the painting is done using the, the graphics context of uh, WebCore. And then we have a core graphics implementation, which is used by the, the Mac port. And then here you just create an NS image and uh, it's painted as well. So I will now give more details about the full screen. Uh, first, a uh, little overview of how you use it as a web developer, for instance. You basically, it's not part of the HTML5 video specification yet, so it's different to browser implementations. And in WebKit, we basically added some new API to the video element, uh, basically in two calls, and three calls actually. <coughs> Uh, WebKit and the full screen, WebKit TF screen, and WebKit supports full screen. So when you call into a full screen, what happens exactly? Uh, the a private WebView API will be triggered, and in, inside, uh, basically, you can do what you want, but most ports uh, create a new, new object for the a controller, and call the enter full screen method of the controller. Uh, and then this hooks to, to web core itself and then do a, a little um, some, some stuff with the private uh, instance of the player I will give some more details in the next slide about that and then once the controller has its widget basically uh, do whatever it wants like add uh, controls and goes full screen which is what you want actually you want to watch a video full screen so on the gesture side of uh, the full screen, well, 
it turns out that uh, plugin, the plugin we use, uh, video sync is not uh, it's it's a bin. So we want to be able to extend it uh, easily when when we go full screen. When was talking previously about uh, dynamic pipeline modifications, maybe that's one instance of it. Uh, for instance, when when full screen is off, we basically uh, have a, a single video sync, uh, the WebKit video sync, which I was talking about previously. And when we want to display a full screen video, we basically request a new pad on the T and uh, add a new branch. Uh, and uh, this branch goes to auto video sync. So it's, uh, the painting is then deferred to OS X Video Sync on Mac OS or uh, XG Image Sync on Linux. And of course, uh, we, we want the elements to play and uh, we send a new cinematic event uh, so that the sync uh, knows exactly the position and uh, all the information it needs. Um, so when we got the auto video sync uh, rolling, we just uh, tried to uh, we we use the GCO Pix overlay uh, interface and uh, we create a new what I call a platform video window uh, object, uh, which basically will create an internal widget on GTK it will be a GTK widget on Cocoa it will be a NSU. And then this is the widget which, which will be retrieved by the full screen video controller. So it can be reused and, uh, by, by web inside. So now some boring WebKit modifications. Uh, yeah, uh, what, what the F here doesn't mean what the F means web template framework. Uh, so yeah, you just need to add some new files in your grid and uh, enable two, two macros so that the preprocessor will basically enable your, your great system macro. And then you need probably to do some more specific modifications of the controller uh, because that's not shared in web code yet. So right now each port has its own controller implementation and it's, uh, it's a bit sad uh, because you, for each port you need to basically modify it, add some if devs or some scary stuff like that. So, on macOS, well, basically, uh, we got um, most of the patches merged, uh, which is quite good news. Uh, there are some patches remaining to be merged. Um, the boring stuff, the Xcode additions, the build system, and um, some patches for the source element as well, like uh, I mentioned earlier. The platform video Cocoa implementation that uh, should uh, soon land, and uh, the controller patch. Then, if you think about packaging, uh, well, WebKit has a nice uh, system called WebKit Nightly. Basically, each night it runs uh, a WebKit build on macOS and prepare a nice DMG that you can test on your on your Mac. So, we thought it would be nice to basically just ship uh, the streamer and its dependencies inside <coughs> of the FDMG and uh, it will basically be a nice solution. Or you, if it could also hook into some maybe system-wide uh, streamer installation, optionally. <coughs> On Windows, uh, well, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, I got a branch. On, on the Galia repository and uh, the patch are not merged already because basically we uh, would keep to use still Visual Studio 5 and the uh, OSIS build uh, <coughs> kind of required uh, Visual Studio 8 so I had to migrate and this provides uh, this makes a big elastic commit that's not uh, easy to erase and, uh, there's a plan in WebKit to basically move to the SPUA, but there's no deadline yet, as far as I know. So <laughs> we will see what happens in the future. And yeah, this, uh, this branch had some basic media controls and full screen, which was uh, fully functional and nicely working. <coughs> I cannot do a demo of that. 
So just to re recap of what you really need to basically do if you want to port uh, your WebKit uh, port to GStreamer and use GStreamer for HTML5 media playback. Uh, this is just a seven step, but uh, it's really simple. You just need to integrate with Julie minimally. Uh, eventually, you patch the WebKit source elements and implement some new classes for painting and uh, the full screen uh, widget. And then patching the, the controller, of course. So I, I just wanted to, this is just a personal thing, that's some bit of advice. Maybe you know it already, but I just wanted to mention. Uh, use plugin 2 if you want to do playback, of course. That's the thing to use. Plugin 1 is duplicated now, I think. So just don't use plugin 1. Um, use the facade design pattern. That's, I think that's a nice thing. Uh, you just design a high level interface and then implement it for your platform in a separate class. I think that's, uh, we had quite, I think we had quite some success with that in WebKit and uh, it could be useful for, for you. Then the build, I had a lot of issues with the build, uh, like on Windows for instance, uh, on Mac as well. So I saw that maybe using a single build system could be a good idea. Uh, for instance, Chrome uh, used JIP, which is a, a tool able to generate Xcode, Visual Studio, or CMake uh, config files. So you just deal with one system and you could cope with the rest, or the with the main platforms. So for your application, I think it's good to have a nice uh, build system. And uh, of course, um, you know that already continuous integration on multiple platforms so that you know that when you commit something bad, uh, it will break a test or something and you've been notified by the, the build So uh, I tried to make a demo of uh, Safari. Uh, Safari itself, as it is now, doesn't support VP8 uh, decoding. There is a VP8 uh, component for QuickTime, but it supports only encoding, as far as I know, so you can't really play VP8 in, in Safari right now. So, just what about using the streamer for it? Uh, so, I just need to play my Mac. So this is a, a web page putting a, a video and it's a web video. So it basically doesn't show anything. Uh, this is a stock Safari version. So if I try now uh, my version of uh, WebKit and basically run Safari with uh, basically run Safari with uh, my port of WebKit. So, I need a keyboard. Need a keyboard. I'm not my user. Is it that one? <laughs> keyboard there? No. Yeah, it doesn't work. Oh. Does someone have a keyboard, a USB keyboard? No. A Mac keyboard. A Mac keyboard, yeah. But Can you log in into the machine? I, I don't know. Is this a key? Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. How do I know my IP? Uh, <laughs> info <laughs> Yeah. 
Can you can you use some file file navigator to get to your webkit? Yeah, it's it's a transcript okay. and a trace editor. You know what? Well, it seems like it's actually broke or something. There's no virtual keyboard. <coughs> like, um, I could probably do like screen sharing. Uh, no, but uh, on the Mac there's a uh, oh, soft keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll go get you. You could have something on the I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I can, you can just continue to size and do the new at the end. So yeah, future plans. Uh, as you could see, there are, there are still some patches to merge in WebKit upstream. Uh, I have two branches, so I'm, most of the patches have been merged already, but there's still work to do. I would like to contribute, maybe work on WebKit just to merge with slaves, so that the WebKit test could be run uh, on Mac and Windows with the Gstreamer player. Uh, that could help the community in general, I think. Because, um, yeah, we, we found there already quite a, well, some just some bugs uh, because of that already. And uh, we could contribute some patches to this tumor to, to fix uh, the WebKit tests. Uh, full screen video improvements. Uh, well, as you could see in the slide where I was showing the pipeline, uh, at full screen, we have basically two video scenes splitting. That's a bit uh, annoying because it can be resource uh, angry. Uh, so there are some improvements to do in that field. Uh, for for the GTK port, we had some possible solution with Cairo, uh, where uh, a single Cairo surface will be shared by the two scenes. We could also pose uh, the WebKit video sync, post playback. Uh, there are some uh, things to investigate there. And then I would like to basically uh, integrate more with GStreamer inside WebKit, uh, at least in the, in the GTK port. I would like to uh, integrate with the codec installer and be able to do some, some things like uh, be able to modify the the volume control based on the WebView itself. So that if in your browser you have multiple tabs showing videos, you could just mute one tab so that all the other one may find and so things like that. So a few pointers to uh, the repository and there's a wiki page as well uh, showing how to uh, build all the things on like with GHB and so on.
Uh, I think I will try to do the new now. Let's see. <coughs> so as you maybe you could read on the on the slide I was displaying before, the, this work uh, was sponsored by Igalia itself. Uh, some research and development uh, subsidies we got some from the Galician government in Spain, and uh, some private Igalia customers. So thanks to them for sponsoring this work. Um, This is a well done video, it's a bit sluggish uh, in the frame rate, but it should work for the screen as well. Yeah. 
So the interesting thing about that is that basically the end user doesn't really know it's this streamer mm. in the back. You, you, you can see the, the controls drawn. These are the controls drawn by Safari uh, when it uses the QuickTime engine. So yeah, I think uh, that using this streamer on, on Safari or on the MacBook itself would be a, a good uh, alternative to QuickTime uh, because, well, okay, because yeah, meanwhile the VPA QuickTime component is in development, we, we could use this one. and it, I think it's quite flexible uh, uh, in the decoding of formats and so on, so it could be a, a good alternative to, to QuickTime. And uh, on Windows as well, it could be a good alternative to direction. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I will go back to the slides quickly. some information, contact information, and uh, yeah, if basically if you have any question or opinion, feedback, whatever, please. Yeah? When you're rendering, uh, is it so that you pass the, you, you pass the buffer to the WebKit and then the WebKit is rendering from the buffer to the uh, graphics context? Could, could it, so it's not zero copy that you can provide the graphic surface to the streamer and the decoder is decoding to that or, or the element is writing to that? Uh, you mean that the streamer itself would do the painting? Or like, like decoding to that uh, output memory region so that you don't copy this several times? Ah, yeah. Uh, I guess it could be a, a solution, yeah, but I didn't really think about it yet. But, uh, yeah, that could be a solution, but um, I don't know yet how to do that. Okay. So if there's no other question, thanks for coming. <coughs>